Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I did a video about a week or two ago talking about Invincible, the comic series, and I think as people know, if you're if you're not new to this channel, you've heard me talk about Invincible before. I think it's a great series. It's one of those that is done. I mean, so you can you can read it from start to finish and, and get a an ultimately long but complete story. And I think it was it was on the whole good. Were there clunky moments in the comic? Absolutely. But uh, in, in terms of of overall, it's it's definitely been one of my favorite comics. I think that's come out in the last twenty years that is is was nailing it as a superhero book i think there was a period of time um a, you know a decent period of time where it was the best superhero book that was being produced monthly and uh, and so in general pretty solid book definitely recommended um if you if you haven't checked it out you should. But we're talking about the TV show. So we've seen the uh, TV series launch on Amazon uh, Prime. It's 10 episodes have come out. Uh, they're all out now, so you can binge them if you if you haven't checked into it. Um, and it's really it's it's a very strong series. I mean, on the whole, uh, one of the things that's most you know I think notable about it is that it does recap the comic extremely well. Uh, there are differences. We're going to talk about a couple of those, but but by and large, it sticks to the comic and it it just it, it delivers very accurate information to the source material. Um, it, it is, but. And I think the lesson there, by the way, if you're Marvel or DC, and as people struggle to get their, their movie plans off the ground, Marvel clearly doing a better job of it at the moment. But if you're DC, like this should be a, a kind of bright flashing light that you can do things with animation and you can do comic accurate storylines uh, and, and it will work as a series. Uh, Invincible got picked up for two more uh, series. It, it, they at least are renewed through season three. And it feels, yeah, I feel, I feel pretty comfortable that they're, they're going to renew that until they're done. Um, it's, it's, the ratings were strong. Uh, the, you know, it, it definitely brought people in and it, it sold a lot of extra comic books, back issues and trades were, were very successful. So in general, um, you know, if I'm rating it, definitely a must watch. It's a good series. They do a good job with it. So strong. So please keep that in mind is now I nitpick a couple areas about the show. Uh, you know, the, the, on the whole, this is an A show. This is a, this is, I, I enjoyed it very much. So let me get uh, a couple things kind of out of the way. I think uh, definitely uh, the Mahler twins were handled very well. I think a lot of the characters, uh, Monster Girl and uh, Cecil and kind of Robot, Rexplo a lot of these characters were, were treated in a way that was not only comic accurate, but translated well to, to the screen. Um, they, they deviated on, on really two characters, uh, I think, uh, more than any others. And I think in both cases, it was a mistake, but I understand one better than the other. Um, before we get there though, the other thing that was a, a heavy deviation and no, I wouldn't have seen this coming is it was more violent than the comic. Uh, the final episode of the TV series features the big battle between, uh, Invincible and, uh, and Nolan, uh, his father. And this is in, you know, if you remember from the comic, it's a brutal fight, you know, people punching the hell out of each other and blood everywhere. And just, just this, this ugly fight where Mark just has the crap kicked out of him. Um, and it is a, what is, uh, what's telling there is that uh, in the TV show, uh, they amp up the violence significantly. The TV show is is far more violent as a cartoon than the comic, which is quite a feat. Uh, that that was definitely not something I saw coming. Uh, there's a scene in the in the episode with between the big fight where uh, basically uh, you know uh, Nolan, uh, the dad, grabs Mark, who's helpless, and uh, shoves him in the way of a uh, incoming subway train. And because they're both, you know, super strong, invincible characters, basically Mark plows through hundreds of passengers, uh, helpless, and and just body parts and blood are, are everywhere. Um, and and so it's that was pretty nuts. Um, I was uh, it it is effective in showing the brutality of that fight. It does it sometimes wander into just being a little you know graphic for graphic, by, you know, since. But uh, you know if. The, the general complaint with a lot of these shows is that they tone down the violence. They make it TV friendly. And this was a, uh, a remarkable opposite <laughs> of that. Uh, the other kind of more more trivial thing, uh, and this is purely just me, is uh, I, I'm definitely um, a fan of uh, Jason uh, 
I'm never quite sure how to pronounce this last name, uh, Mantizokas. Uh, I think I liked him on um, The Good Place, and and he's a great comedian, and I like I, I just I like that character. Um, having him be Rexplode, I could never not see Jason. I, I, I it just it's one of those cases where the voice was so distinctive that it took away from the character that he was voicing. Didn't have the same problem with Steven Yeun or even J.K. Simmons. I mean, it's clearly J.K. Simmons who's voicing Nolan, but uh, it's it just fit. It fit. It just seemed to fit a little bit better. Uh, Zachary Quinto being uh, the voice of Robot, um, Mark Hamill being the voice of Art. I mean, there, there's a lot of, of big names in here. Um, Seth Rogen's Alan the Alien. I suspect that's going to get super annoying in later episodes when we see a lot more of Alan. Uh, but in general, the only one that was uh, a take you out of the moment for me was was Jason, and and that was um, it is what it is. It's it's fine. That's my own little weirdness. But two characters were changed, I think, uh, fairly significantly for this series, and uh, they they were um, you know first you had uh, Debbie Grayson, uh, the mom, so Sandra O oh voicing her, and Debbie is an interesting character because in the comics uh, she was very much um, a supporting character. They didn't do a whole lot with her. She was just kind of there as the mom. They didn't, uh, you know, they, they, they would do kind of, they tossed token things at her to make her seem smart. Uh, but generally she just, she didn't have too much of a personality. Later in the comics, she becomes an alcoholic and, and everything else. But, but generally she's a bit character in the, in the comic. And in the show, they take pains to have her kind of on to Nolan, uh, to have her a little bit more proactive, to have her more, um, uh, more independent, I would say. They, they, they're trying to elevate her. And I get, I get why they, they would want to do that. Um, especially you get a more main character. Uh, the, the mom was, was kind of an awkward character in the comics of just kind of being there. And, and that's, that's okay. I mean, the, the purpose of the comic is about Mark and kind of his friends and his, his dynamic, but they definitely changed aspects of her personality to make her, her, you know, come across as smarter and more with it, uh, than in the, the comics. And so it, it's, it's a deviation. I think, uh, they, they at least hinted at the end of the season that, that we were going to now go down the path of, uh, uh, her being, uh, an alcoholic like they had in the comics and, and kind of dealing with all that. Uh, which will be a, a, a kind of a maybe it's a case where they're going to get to the same place with the character, just slightly different path of getting to it. I felt that the whole um, what's Nolan up to mystery um, in the comic, they had this this brutal scene where he goes and he murders the Guardians of the Globe. And, and why why could he do that? And they pay it off a few issues later. Um, I, I found that was a nice subplot in the comic. In the show, that became almost the driving force of, of most of the season, is what's Nolan up to. And they, they devoted a lot of screen time to that. And I don't think they needed to. I think in many cases, it, it took away a little bit from, yeah, you know, kind of exploring Mark being a new hero and, and all the things about Invincible. And and so, I, I you know, they put a little bit too much emphasis on that. And certainly, Debbie Grayson's character was, was kind of at the heart of it. Um, the other character, though, the one that they changed more significantly that I think was a mistake for, for a few reasons, I'm guessing to why they do it, is the character of Amber Bennett. So Amber Bennett in the comics ultimately is not a not a very big deal. She uh, she was Mark's first kind of girlfriend. She was the popular girl he couldn't believe he was dating. And she was mainly there to serve as a foil for what was clearly the romance they wanted to tell, which was uh, Invincible and Adam Eve. Uh, that, those were the characters that, that were clearly made for each other, and, and, so was, and Amber was in the way for, to some extent. Um, Amber's personality in the comic was kind of, uh, you know, cheerleader, kind of flighty uh, type personality. Um, I don't, I don't know if she was a cheerleader or not, but just definitely more ditzy, uh, more obsessed with kind of popularity. You know, my boyfriend's a superhero when she finds out that kind of stuff. And in this one, they take the character of Amber Bennett and they make her more. Um, She's, she's weirdly everything. Like at the beginning, she's introduced as a very popular girl. You know, everybody would want to be with Amber. Uh, but she, she happens to volunteer down at the soup kitchen. She's uh, smart. She has some reporting skills. She's, she's just kind of all over the place for being a, uh, a super capable character. And uh, some of her personality type and kind of where it gets into is this dynamic that she's dating Mark. But they go out of their way to do this, you know, we're... You, you need to make sure you're spending attention to me. And this this romance between the two of them feels more awkward than anything, especially because there's enough of a hint. And if you read the comics that ultimately Mark's going to wind up with Adam Eve. So what is even going on here now? Maybe they're taking a dramatically different path and they're going to keep them together. Uh, but it 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 always felt like a very oddball 
romance where half of it is Amber trying to uh, tell, not show, the audience that uh, she is very smart, very capable, and you know she needs people to to respect her, and it it just it 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 kind of tarnished the character. And a few of the things that they did with her um, in regards to Mark needs to make sure his priorities, he's saving the world, but he's also juggling this uh, person in his life and how this all works um, is a storyline they pick up later with Adam Eve. Uh, when Adam Eve is pregnant and and other parts of, of kind of how that character goes, Mark's uh, headstrong behavior of sometimes leaping into action without thinking causes this conflict. So I wonder a little bit if they, they injected those storylines into Amber uh, because they didn't know if the series would continue, if they'd ever get to some of those, you know, what in the comic is much later in the series, maybe, uh, you know, maybe that's why. Um, so that, that could be what, that could be what they were thinking, um, by doing this, that, that they were trying to get some of these storylines in early, not knowing if they were going to pay them off. But now, unfortunately, um, the show was a success and they are getting renewed. So you do kind of wonder if, if, uh, what are we going to do to Adam Eve's character? Cause some of these moments that they've kind of now done with, with Amber, um, you know, are they, are they going to repeat them again with Adam Eve? That's going to seem kind of weird. It's going to also make Mark look like a dope. One of the things about Invincible as a comic is it's supposed to show his growth, that he's maturing and learning and understanding. And uh, that's that's part of the enjoyment of the series. So if they wind up replaying the same storylines again, it's going to come across more like Mark is an idiot who, who can't grow. And and so it's, it's curious how they all go with that. I didn't mind the race swap. Uh, Amber was white in the comics. She's black in the in the TV series. That that doesn't matter. It's more the kind of that nature of the character. And then the last piece with her was was that um, you know in the comic, Mark reveals his super identity to her, and Amber being that personality is kind of like, oh my god, I'm dating a you know it, was, it kind of fit that kind of celebrity. I'm I'm dating somebody popular. It, it just fit with what she was doing. And in this one, uh, when Mark finally reveals the secret identity to Amber, uh, she's like, yeah, I already knew that. Um, but you should have still, you know, given time. You should have still made time for me rather than just chase around. You still have your responsibility to me if I'm going to be your girlfriend. So get, get lost. So not only did they take the punch out of that reveal, but if you think about it, it also makes Amber seem like a complete terrible person because, uh, you know, the kind of what leads to their last fight is there's a big kind of brawl at campus and these zombie creatures come out and start attacking people. And Mark runs off nowhere to be found. She's yelling after him, Mark, where are you? And then he shows up immediately as invincible and, and kind of saves the day and saves lives. And so for Amber to then turn around and be like, why'd you run off? Well, you know, right. He ran off. You knew he was, you knew he was invincible. So he didn't run off. He, he went to go save the day. You know that because you know his identity. And yet you're still kind of chastising himself, uh, him for running away. It, it's just, it, it plays off all, all goofy. And, and so that was kind of a, that, that took away from the series. Um, it, it feels like we're not done with Amber, that we're going to, you know, we're going to get more of her because uh, she saw Mark get super, you know, beat up by his dad. And then, you know, she's uh, likely going to try and mend some fences before you eventually get to the Adam Eve relationship. Uh, but you kind of hope that that storyline's done. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of hope that, you know, we're going to move past that, but we'll see uh, where it all goes. Anyway, overall, certainly a few problems, uh, but but very, very minor. It's an enjoyable show. It's a good superhero show. It's doing some new things. I think it's worth checking out, but, but more than anything, check out the comic. The comic is great. Um, let me know what you think. Did you like the show? Hate the show? Uh, let me know in the comments below, and thanks for listening.